Well, yeehaw, cowpokes. I'm out here at the Fort Worth Stockyards where uh, we keep every cowboy in all of Texas. That's some yeehaw shit right there, I tell ya. It's 2020 and I live in Texas. Good thing Italy was prepared for this. There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew, Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew gonna drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones around to be had. Today's episode... 2020 Texas Gladiators. It's a new year, damn it. I know we're like two and a half months into this new year. But I just got my own place, so the year starts now. The new place is very small. There's, there's not room for a marker board behind me, so... The new aesthetic for the show is... The guy sits in front of shelves full of DVDs. I know, it's the most original aesthetic. No one's ever done that before. I, I still have the marker board. It's over there. Use it for D&D. Yeah, it's just that, uh, that there's a mirror behind these uh, shelves. And I can't really hang that over the mirror. So... I hope you like shelves of DVDs. It's 2020, I want action! So 2019, after the fall of New York, was pretty obvious with what it was ripping off. Mainly Road Warrior and Escape from New York, with maybe a dash of some other movies for flavor. But 2020 Texas Gladiators is also blatant with what it's ripping off. It's ripping off 2019, after the fall of New York! Now I know what you're thinking, surely it's a coincidence that two Mad Max ripoffs are set just one year apart, and also released one year apart. But you know who wrote this movie? George Eastman! Big Ape from 2019! That's right, the ripoff is coming from inside the house. Eastman just wrote his own Mad Max ripoff while working on another Mad Max ripoff. But he handed off directing duties to the man of a thousand names, Joe D'Amato, who's used around 50 fake names as a director. Even Joe D'Amato isn't his real name. His real name is Aristide Masnesikes... Joe D'Amato! He is the Italian Charles Band. And not just because he's used thousands of fake names. He's directed hundreds of no-budget genre films and produced hundreds more. He worked on Witchery and Ghost House and was likely the one behind the Evil Dead 3 and Evil Dead 4 titles because his best-known production is Troll 2. Which, again, ties him to Charles Band, who produced Troll 1. And I said 2019 was a nasties reunion, but not only did Diamato direct Absurd and Anthropophagus with Eastman, this film's star, Al Cliver, is known for Zombie, The Beyond, and Devil Hunter, all on the DPP list. He was also in a movie set in 2072, so guess I'll be back in 52 years to review that. And most of the cast was in another Mad Max ripoff, Warriors of the Lost World, famous for being... One of the better movies featured on MST3K. And yes, I would like to address, I live in Texas where this film is set. But here's the thing, I don't know that the Italian version of this film was set in Texas. I think they changed it for America. Because there is little to no indication this is set in Texas. And we'll get to that for sure. And just before we get started, I would like to thank Travis Anderson, one of my wonderful patrons over on Patreon. If you're interested in supporting me, the link's in the description. Just one dollar a month will get you these videos a day early. And with that, let's see what's happening directly outside my door right now. This is 2020 Texas Gladiators. The first person we meet is this guy, and he's dead. Good. Sets the pace for the movie. In fact, this whole opening scene is just random fighting with no context. This guy gets crucified, so that's rad. 
And check this out. This guy pushes an axe with two spikes on it back into the axe wielder's eyes. That's at least partially on you, dude. That's just poor design. And it's always a good sign when there's attempted rape before the first line of dialogue. Fucking finally, over seven minutes into this movie, we're introduced to whoever the fuck these guys are. I suppose they're the good guys because they kick out the rapey guy and promise to protect this girl? No, the law has gone and killing isn't the way to bring it back. Justice to you is, is an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth like it says in the scriptures. That doesn't help build a new civilization. For you, the answer is destruction. But there are those who construct you. Lady, he saved your life! Fuck off! We got some Mad Max cars... doing nothing. Uh, here's some new characters. See, it was in the Great War of the 2010s that the concept of basic film structure was destroyed. So this film is basically just a collection of random shit happening. So, um, if I mention something and I haven't brought it up before, uh, just assume it showed up the scene I mentioned it. Because that's just how this movie goes. And in post-war Texas, people are so weak, steam knocks them unconscious. And this guy's concerned about this box. Possibly because it contains explosives, but more likely he's just upset about this spelling error. Oh god, I sure hope he turns that wheel before that box does something. Mad Max bikers look like they might actually do something, but we need to talk about this. New York City has a lot of well-known landmarks, but Texas doesn't so much. Basically just the Alamo. I mean, there's stuff locals would probably recognize, but an Italian wouldn't know that many. So how they chose to make this place that is obviously not Texas look like Texas, they put up a sign that says, Texas. Which, to be fair, there are a lot of in Texas, but here's the thing. I'm not even convinced they set this in Texas. This could easily have been an addition for the English market, because other than that sign and a guy in a cowboy hat, no one even mentions Texas. So, uh, I guess these bikers are attacking the workers' commune of Texas? Actually, I wish Texas did have a workers' commune. And now, 20 minutes into the film, before these characters or these characters have really been introduced, there's a shootout! I'll give Italy credit, they know what's important in a movie. And the biker guys have an army, I think? But these guys seem like rabble-rousers who just want to cause trouble and fuck shit up. Why would they be working for an evil authoritarian army? Anyways, they make it into the commune and gun down more nameless workers. I will remember you. Well, no, that's a lie. I, you didn't even have a name. Why would I remember you? And don't worry, in dystopian 2020, we're equal opportunity rapists. Don't hurt him, he's a boy, that's all. Get away, woman! God, I'm so sorry. I promise we'll have less rape in future movies. Jesus, y'all need to find this movie for yourself. It's on YouTube. Because I'm going to have to censor this woman's outfit, but it's so fucking useless. It doesn't protect her body, and it shows off her tits. Why wear this? It's about as useless as the workers. They just keep gunning down for no reason. We are half an hour into this hour and 25 minute movie, and the only character with a name is the would-be rapist from the beginning. Those guys I thought were the good guys, by the way, haven't come back yet. But ah, uh, let's hear the villain's speech. Because we are the predestined inheritors of power over this planet. Before the Holocaust... Uh, uh, never mind. Basically, the communes discovered a new source of energy or something, and the future Nazis won it? They can't be that bad, though. They let a guy run all the way up, jump over their line, and stab someone before shooting him. Cut to a saloon where they're playing Russian roulette, cause fuck that other storyline. If you can decipher the story of 2020 Texas Gladiator, you're a better man than I. But look at the complex video games we'll have in 2020. This guy, who I think is one of the good guys from the beginning, bets a bag of diamonds on the Russian roulette. 
Where where did he get a bag of diamonds? I won. I won. That causes a bit of a bar fight, though. Oh. Got any threes? Ah, damn it! You knew I had threes. So as punishment for the bar fight, they have to work in the mines. Those famous Texas salt mines, well established in this movie up to this point. And I was right, they're Texas Rangers, which is a real law enforcement agency in Texas. Gotta say, their uniforms have had a major upgrade. They are not, however, Texas Gladiators. No clue where that name came from. And the future Nazis are paying people to kill them. I guess this is Texas, this guy's wearing a cowboy hat. Every four hours you get a... Every four hours you get a ten minute break. And every four hours you get a... And every four hours you get a blown line. What the fuck, this was dubbed. How did you blow a dubbed line? Can't we take the leak? Oh! That answer you? No, actually, you just hit me. Ah, but they got masks on, so it's time for this totally topical joke. It's got a coronavirus mask on it! This is terrible! Haha, <laughs> <laughs> that won't date this video. You know, of me saying this is March 2020 didn't already give it away. And this guy is staying really well hydrated for a guy working in the salt mines in the post-apocalypse. His piss is totally clear. Luckily, the third Texas Ranger shows up and frees them. Glad we had that vignette. I literally have no idea what's happening in this scene, but a gunfight starts, so that's neat. Who are the good guys? Who are the bad guys? That's the question, isn't it, man? Who are the good guys? Who are the bad guys? Can there even be good guys in a war, you know? Makes you wonder. Makes me wonder who the fuck these characters are. There's like 20 minutes left in this film. You can't just introduce new characters. I wish you could help me find my daughter. Yes. Don't worry, we'll find her too. D what? Is this an anthology movie? Did no one- did someone forget to tell me this was an anthology movie? You can't introduce a plot point about trying to find your daughter at the one hour mark. I guess they were the good guys since the bad guy shows up and kills them. I'm gonna trip that hell. <laughs> but they live, I guess, and they talk to some Native Americans about helping them fight the bad guys. Are there Native American tribes in Texas that, like, wouldn't already be integrated? Or did these guys reform a tribe during the war that I guess happened. You know, they don't really explain why the apocalypse is happening. It just is. It's just post-apocalyptic. So a fight is in order. Good guy wins, they help. Native wins, they don't. Seems pointless, but of course the good guy wins, so it's another damn shootout. I mean, at least they're pretty good shootouts. Not great, but better than the fight scenes in 2019. Oh, and the future Nazis have a heat shield? Meaning bullets can't get through, but arrows can. But oh no, the Nazis killed the closest thing to a main character. Jack, can you hear me? Nice, he's dying, and this is the first time anyone's called him by his name. R.I.P. Jack. Odd name considering he didn't do Jack all movie. So they finally killed Discount Donald Pleasance. Pretty sure he's a more fleshed out character than Jack. Oh, and that woman got her daughter back. The end. And that's the story of the time some future Nazis took over the Texas Workers Commune for, like, a week. Before some Texas Rangers showed up and defeated them. It's pretty fun. Honestly, despite having an impossible-to-follow plot, I like this a little better than 2019. It's fun to throw on for friends who won't really pay attention anyway. Probably a great movie to watch while high. It's got fun action and some asinine moments. It's not worth digging up, but since it's on YouTube for free, it might be worth a look. It can be annoying if you try to follow along, but if you just give up early on, it's pretty funny. 
My biggest issue is how annoyingly repetitive the score is. It's a synthesizer playing the same fucking beat the whole movie. But if you can get past that, it's got its charm. But of course, it's totally unrealistic. That's not what's happening in Texas right now. <laughs> Take a gun and start shooting, comrade. The commune's under attack. Commune? Attack? By who? I hope you don't expect a coherent answer to that question. The Texas gladiators shoot first and ask questions never. Let's go. Uh, if you like Texas, I did a review of Chupacabra vs. the Alamo. And until next time, I'm Matt and... Uh, Gotta protect the commune. Don't shoot, it's me! Look at this shit, I've, I've reorganized my whole shelving system just so I can have bad movies right over my shoulder when I talk. I did this for you. And, and this I did for MST3K, it's the MST3K shelf.